cross site request forgery it's one of those vulnerabilities that's a little bit tricky to understand at first but when you see it in a demo it can help explain what's happening it's an attack that's launched by a, another vulnerability cross site scripting so in that way it's just one of the things you can do with cross site scripting cross site scripting vulnerabilities can run any javascript code in the browser and one of many such examples would be a script that forges a request to another website. In other words, a cross-site request forgery. As an example, take this user poll page, which is not necessarily vulnerable to cross-site scripting, but it may be vulnerable to a forged request. If you click on the hints and videos, and then on the cross-site request forgery hint inside of Mozilla we can get a head start. Over here, the script to do a proof of concept is already written. We can see how to write these scripts. We always start by creating a form element. And this is gonna have the same attributes as a form that was typed in HTML. We'll have an action, which will be the vulnerable page and a method, which can be get or post. The encoding type, because it's a form, it's gonna be the form you're all encoded. And we have to have a, this statement here, which is key. This attaches the form to the body of the page. That's important because a form cannot be submitted unless it's attached to the page. And then it's just a matter of taking each parameter one by one and attaching the parameter to the form. And so the parameter gets a name and a type and a value, and that repeats itself for every element. You may say, well, how would somebody know what those are? If you look at the original page and look at the form in the view page source, you can easily make out what the form looks like. Once you find the form tag, you'll be able to see that the parameters are just in there one by one. So there's one form on the page. Here's the one that actually does the poll. You see it has an action, method, and encoding type. And then there's the fields. Here's the first field, which actually is a hidden field. And then you have the field to choose the which tool you want to vote for, the initials field. And one thing you can't forget is the actual button itself. So the button, when it's drawn on the page, looks like a button, but it's really just an input element like any other input element. It's just the type is either submit or button. So when the browser renders it, it makes it appear as a button-shaped object. So after copying those over, into the scripts, we now have a cross-site script that at least has the potential to send a request over to the user poll. Now, whether it's vulnerable to cross-site request forgery or not depends on whether the page has been securely coded. But nonetheless, the cross-site script will still send the script, it's may or, even if it's not vulnerable. So let's go to a page that's vulnerable to cross-site scripting, and well, at least we can watch the script itself get kicked off. We'll use Burp Suite Proxy so we can have the request go through Burp Suite where we can see what's happening and slow down the action. Otherwise, it happens too fast, and it happens in the background where you can't really tell what's happening. So we're just going to get the proxy set up. We'll turn the intercept off for now. We'll come back to that here in a second. We're also changing the settings in Firefox to have all the traffic go through the Burp Suite proxy. So back here on this page, we'll just go to one of the pages that has a cross-site scripting vulnerability. We need that to be able to show the attack. In fact, let's le let's use the blog page because we'll be able to see this a little bit easier. 
the blog page has a persistent cross-site script. So the cross-site script won't go away. It'll be stored in the database and we'll be able to use it over, over and over again. <clears throat> so we'll save that cross-site script. And one of the things about that particular proof of concept is that it is triggered by an on mouse over. Normally that wouldn't be something that a cross-site script would do because the attacker wouldn't want to depend on the user happening to mouse over a particular spot on the screen. But this makes really good proof of concept because you can control when the process script triggers, which helps do demonstrations a lot easier. I'm going to go back to burp, turn that intercept back on. And now we'll mouse over the area to trigger the cross-site script. So the cross-site script executes and sends a forged request to the user pull page. We can see that forged request here with the various parameters. In the options, let's make sure that the responses are being intercepted as well, which they are in this case, but are usually not by default. We'll forward this request to the server. And the server will either have a vulnerable page or a patched page, and depending on which it is, it'll fall for the forced request or it won't. In this case, we get the results back from the server, and because we're running in security level zero, which is not defended against these kinds of vulnerabilities, the there aren't going to be any cross-site request forgery tokens, and the page is going to fall victim to the forged request. Now, in security level five, it would have defended itself. So we'll forward that response on back to the web browser. We'll go ahead and turn the intercept off so the rest of the parts of the page can come back. Now, we're on the user poll page. And we see that there's one vote for NMAP. We're going to erase the rest of this part here and just visit the page, make sure the vote's stuck. So it does appear it is vulnerable. And we also got to see how a cross-site script that has a payload that sends a forged request to a vulnerable page can cause that page to get a form submission, even though the user never actually filled out a form at all. Now let's take a look at this from another point of view as well. So what if we have the forged request in a proxy? So this is a little bit different look at the same vulnerability. In the first case, a cross-site script running on who knows what site, it could be any site, sent a forged request to the vulnerable page. But also, we have that request in the proxy history and it is possible to replay those as well. So that's something that to keep in mind is that attackers don't have to use browsers in order to send requests. They can send them from anywhere, including from proxy history or anywhere else. So if we take a look at the, the proxy history, one of the things that we'll notice is that there's all kinds of requests that were sent, and one of them was that forged request. So what happens if we just replay that forged request? Well, if the page is vulnerable to cross-site request forgery, and this would be a good test, every time we send this forged request, the page is gonna process it because it doesn't have any defenses to tell that the request wasn't just made up we go back over here to the page, and then we'll just refresh the page, scroll down, we can see the count went up to seven. To fix this issue, the page needs to have a token randomly generated that is impossible to guess that is attached to the form, just in case the user fills the form out. If the user does fill the form out, that secret number would come back to the server. The server could look up that number in the session storage to see if it has a copy of that number. In other words, 
verify that it gave out that number earlier. And it would know that that was a legitimate request. If any other request comes in, it wouldn't have the secret number or the number would be wrong. The server would detect that and it could safely just ignore the request.